Hi guys, Dr. Berg here. In this video, we're going to talk about vitamin E in coronary heart disease, okay? Now, there are studies out there that will show that vitamin E causes coronary heart disease, and there are studies that show that it actually will cure coronary heart disease. Well, what they fail to tell you is the, unless you read the fine print, is that the ones that show that vitamin E causes heart disease are always using a synthetic vitamin E. They're not using a natural vitamin E, it's always synthetic. So that's a big factor because apparently synthetics don't work for heart disease, okay? It doesn't prevent any heart disease situations. It might be good for other things, but not, definitely not the heart. So vitamin E in nature always comes in a complex with many different parts. This is the vitamin E complex. Yes, it has the decopherols, which are the antioxidant Porsche parts, which is the alpha, beta, delta, gamma, but it also has um, another uh, factor called uh, xanthine, selenium, a mineral, uh, liposols, F2, F1, E2, E3 fractions, all these different component parts. It doesn't come as one thing. So when you take that one version, you're only getting a very portion, a small portion of the vitamin E complex. The, the key that I'm going to talk about, the most important thing I want to talk about is this uh, getting a natural version. You want to get the version, if you actually buy it from the store, something that says tocotrienols, okay? Tocotrienols are the natural version that you want to get. And if you get the ones that have the alpha and the beta, the gamma and the delta in one complex, you're getting a, a better version because these are fat soluble. These are vitamin E in general is a fat soluble vitamin, which means it penetrates the cell wall. And that's what it will do. It penetrates the plaque in the arteries and it helps dissolve the plaque. It also decreases platelets from forming that form the clot in the first place. It also will help you prevent the oxidation of cholesterol. So vitamin E is very important in preventing the clot formation, which also could lead to strokes. All right. The other point I want to make about vitamin E is that, yes, it's true it comes from grains, whole grains, but as soon as they grind the grain and make it into flour, it oxidizes from oxygen and it gets destroyed pretty quick. So when you buy bread, even whole wheat from the store, you're buying bread from flour that can been sitting on the shelf for six months to a year. So normally you probably are not going to have time to grind your grain and make the bread, even though it's even high in sugar, the whole thing, but you, if you were to take whole grain and grind it and make your bread, you would get some vitamin E. But there's much better uh, ways to get your vitamin E. So here's the question. How do I get my vitamin E? What foods do I eat? That's a really good question. I'm glad you asked. Number one, wheat germ. But the problem with wheat germ is it's either roasted or if it's raw wheat germ, it's rancid because it's sitting on the shelf for a long time. So that's probably not the best idea. You can get it from palm oil, you can get it from nuts, or you can get it from this right here, lettuce. So just so happens that lettuce has a lot of vitamin E, and this is another reason why you need to eat large salads, right? I mean, I will, I will do a huge salad, and uh, I'll probably do half of this in one salad. Okay, in summary, the next time you get a vitamin E, uh, make sure it's a natural version, make sure it's in the complex, and really start eating your salads. All right? Thanks for watching. Hey, before you go, if you're benefiting from any of my content, I would love to hear about your success story. Please share it in the link down below.